First of all, before we get started, I just want to welcome all the guests here this week from uh, up north. They're running away from the hurricane tonight. They live on the shore in Deal, so they came down to Lakewood to warm up with a little Torah. The, uh, this week's Parsha, Parsha's Mitzvah and Vayelech, is full of different Ramazim and different lessons to be learned about Rosh Hashanah. Aside from the Parsha's Tshuva, which we have in this week's Parsha, the, the part in Parsha's Nitzavim alone, part of the Parsha teaches us about Tshuva. What we have is a few other things, a few other lessons that we can learn from Rosh Hashanah, and we're going to try to just touch on a couple of them with the time that we have. The Pasuk says, Atem Nitzavim Hayoim Kulchem Lefnei Hashem Alekechem. So first, let's, let's talk about Nesiv Shalom. Nesiv Shalom brings down from Svarim that the word Hayoim, Atem Nitzavim Hayoim, the word Hayoim many times, and over here, is referring to Rosh Hashanah. We see Hayoim HaRat Salaam, we say on Rosh Hashanah. Many different places, we bring around, many different places we see that the word Hayoim refers to Rosh Hashanah. The Zakh and Nesiv Shalom an amazing thing. He says, it comes now, it's a few days before Rosh Hashanah, and a, a person could be thinking to himself, how am I going to come to Rosh Hashanah? All the Kabbalahs we made last year, we took, a, we took upon ourselves so many things, and really, did I really do so well? What did I do this week? How much of my time did I waste? What are the things that I did this year? How am I going to come into Rosh Hashanah? I need, I need an Eitzah. I need, I need something good to go into Rosh Hashanah with. So the Siva Shalom says, that's the first, the first Pasuk in this week's parsha. Atem Itzavim Hayoim. How do you go into Rosh Hashanah? Kulchem. If you all together, like we said, we've spoken a number of times over the last couple of weeks, if there's Achdus and Klai Yisrael, if a person comes in by Achdus and he, and he says, it's an amazing Eitzah to be Mavato yourself to the Tzibur, to become part of a Tzibur, that's a special Tzibur to come to Rosh Hashanah. That's, that's, uh, that, he, he also says that an interesting thing he, about, uh, about Dinim, that Dinim are really only Chal on an individual. In order for Dinim to be Chal on a Tzibur, when every, everybody's together, that's a whole different world. It's very, very difficult to be uh, for Dinim to be Chal Tzibur. And really, he brings a raya from a Medrash Tan a very interesting Medrash Tan on this week's Parsha. It says like this, on the word Hayoi, now listen to this. He says, Hayoi, he talks about the word Hayoi. Ma Hayoi, just like a day, Ma feel Umeir, it becomes dark and light. He says, the same way, Af Atem, so, so too you, Kla Yisrael, Bizman sha'afel lochem, and a time that it's dark for you, ani meir lochem. I'm gonna make it light for you. That's what the Rambam Shalom says. Referring to again this thing about hayoyim from Rosh Hashanah, can just like it gets dark and it gets light, so too in a time of darkness, the Rambam Shalom says, I'm going to make it light for you. But there's a catch. Amosai says the Medrash, bizman shetiyu kulchem ba'aguda achas. The Rambam Shalom is telling us an amazing eitzah, amazing segul of Rosh Hashanah. Be friendly with everybody. Have Amas and Sorrow. Be together. Because if you're like that, then Dinu cannot be Chal and Chal Yisrael. Because when a Yid is Mevatel himself to the Tzibur, it's a whole different, uh, it's a whole different ballgame. And the Tzibur Shalom brings down a Maisa from the Dibri Shmuel. Dibri Shmuel was the, was the second Slot of Rebbe. It must have been Nifter probably a little over 100 years ago. And it brings out an amazing story. It says the Dibri Shmuel, in the time of Dibri Shmuel, there was a Yid. And it came right before Yom Kippur, and this Yid, he was just beside himself. He, he just couldn't imagine, he couldn't figure out a way that he's going to come into Yom Kippur. He didn't know what to do. And it came to the point that he was so, he got so uptight and so upset that right before Yom Kippur, before Nidre, he went barging into the Dirish Shmuel, who was the Rebbe. And he said to the Dirish Shmuel, how am I going to be, how am I going to come into Yom Kippur? Look at what I did this year. I didn't live up to what I should be. I, 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 I didn't learn as, I, as much as I was supposed to. How can I come into Yom Kippur? So Dibri Shmuel turned to him and he said to him, you know what, I was just thinking the same thing. I was wondering how I'm gonna go into Yom Kippur. He says, me too. I, I don't think I lived up to what I should be, what I should have been this year. He says, but I know how we're gonna do it. And he put his hand around his shoulder and he said, let's go. Together, he said, if we go in together into the Beit Medrash, and together they walk into Kol Nidre. He says, if a Yid is, is, is with another Yid, and there's Abbas Yisrael, and everybody's together as one group, he said, then there's no problem. You have your problems. You think you can't do it. I think I can't do it. But if we go in together, 
then we have an amazing tzachos for, for Yom Kippur. And that, that's one lesson. I wanted to touch upon something else here. We all, we're all familiar with the Pesach at the end of the lane that we do Monday and Thursday. Everybody lane, lanes along with the Balkoire. Everybody knows the truck. Everybody knows how it goes. Famous Pesach. That's the Pesach. The Siva Shalom says that there are different Pshatim. Rashi has, Rashi has a Pshat in his stories. The Siva Shalom says that his stories could be referring to the Machshavish that a person has. And we all know that people during the year, sometimes, you know, we fall, we're not able to do everything we want to do. But sometimes the thing we have the most trouble with is even if we can control our actions, sometimes we have contro uh, trouble controlling our thoughts. So the Nesir Shalom asks, how, how can we have a way, let's find a way that we'll be able to get control of our whole, of everything that, the, everything that we have. So, say our deeds and say our thoughts. He says like this, and his Torah is he says, these things which are the stories, things which only the Rabban Shalom really knows, which are, which are the machshavah, the things that go through your head. How do you go about even, how do you go about even making your machshavah pure? He said, there's only one way. That's the end of this puzzle. La Azois has called it Rea Torah Azois. No, no, sometimes, he says, sometimes you'll see a person knows, the Torah is not, Torah is not a textbook. Torah is not a book to be read. The only way that a person can really grow and really become what he's supposed to be is if not, you, if you don't just sit and learn. Sometimes people say, oh, look at this person. He must be unbelievable. He's sitting, he's learning in yeshiva 15 years and everything. But you know something? That's not a guarantee. Because if you don't la'asois, if you don't internalize, and if you don't use what you learn and bring it out and actually do the things that the Torah is telling you to do, then you're missing the boat. You're missing the whole. You're missing the whole story here. So the, a segula to be able to be in control and 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 and, and have and be able to come into Rosh Hashanah and Kippur and to change for next year. That's last is so called the Brei Atayrazayis. You can't just think. You can't just learn. But you have to take it to the next step. You have to do it. You have to. You have to carry it through and do it. And he says another beautiful shot in Hana stories, which I want to show you. He says from the the Baal Shem Tov. Baal Shem Tov is a kasha. We all know the. It, it says that Kol Yoyim, uh, Vasco, goes out, goes out from Har goes out from Har Sinai, and says, We all, we're all familiar with the with this Maimar Chazal. So the Baal Shem Tev asks an unbelievable kasha. He says, first of all, Maman of Shach, why don't we hear it? What good does it do if a Vasco goes out from Har Sinai and says, What good does it do? It's not doing anything. We don't hear it. And he says, and 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 uh, and besides that. If, and if you can't hear it, why, why is it happening? In other words, let's hear it. But if you tell me, no, you can't hear it, then, then what's the Baskal coming out for? So talked about Shet of an amazing thing. He said, the Baskal comes out, that's the Nistores. He says, sometimes a person, out of nowhere, just out of nowhere, you, you see it happens to you all the time. You get an inspiration. Sit down and learn, do tshuva, uh, ask someone mechila, do something. Out of nowhere, you feel that you're getting some sort of inspiration in a shemayim. All of a sudden, comes a Shabbos, it comes a thing. Somehow, you, you get an inspiration. And and what do you do? So you you, you act on, you try to act on that inspiration. Zakhtan is even shown from the Baal Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov says that that is the basco. That's the basco that's going out. It's not meant to be audible. It's not meant that that, that people should hear that. But that Basco, what you're feeling, that sudden inspiration to learn, to do tshuva, to do something right, that's the Basco that's coming out of, uh, out, of Har, out of Har Sinai. However, what do you have to do with that? Zokta Baal Shem Tov, just for it to be a, bas a Basco, and you hear it, you know, it's talking to your heart. It's talking to your neshama. Your, sh your neshama can hear things that your ears don't hear. That's a very interesting thing. Your neshama hears, hears those things, but the Baal Shem Tov, you can't just do nothing with it. That's the thing. And the story Slashem came. These voices that are hidden, these messages that the Rabbi Shalom sends us, but what is it? Lasois. You have to take those messages and do something with it. Don't let those inspirations slip away. And we know, of course, now every person that comes closer to Rosh Hashanah, every person is having more and more of those inspirations. You know, the daily things that are coming out of Har Sinai, we're starting to feel more of them as we get closer and closer to Rosh Hashanah. So the idea is, la'asois is called the Rehat Torah that you should end up doing something with it. 
It comes now, uh, many, I just want to end off, but many Sfarim say that the end of the year, this Shabbos is the last Shabbos of the year. And many Sfarim bring down that each day of the week, you're able to, to get a kapara and to, to do tshuva on everything from, from the end. And Shabbos is a, is a day really we were supposed to spend in learning and meruchnias. And sometimes we don't always uh, do everything on Shabbos and treat Shabbos the way we should, respect Shabbos, have Shabbos on, uh, have Shabbos on, uh, have, do, our, do our learning on Shabbos, be Makabal Shabbos the way it should be. So let's talk and use this Shabbos, the last Shabbos of the year, that, that we should be able to talk and do tshuva for all the other Shabbosites. And uh, this is, I guess, the last year for Rosh Hashanah, which will be Zaycha, to Xivot Semetoiva, and I good to mention you.